Hello and welcome to this Qt Design Studio tutorial series. My name is Brooke and I'm going to show you how to create a user interface using Qt Design Studio and Adobe Photoshop. First we'll take a look at a quick overview of Design Studio and then a look at the finished UI for this tutorial, which will be an instrument cluster for a fictional vehicle. And the design is composed of three main gauges, a tachometer, a speedometer and a fuel gauge along with a gear indicator icon and an ISO safety icon panel. So let's start with a quick tour of Design Studio, and I'm just going to outline the main parts now, and we'll come back to look at them in detail over the course of this project. In the middle of our screen we have our main view, which consists of the form editor, a visual what you see is what you get representation of our UI, and the text editor, where we can edit the code. And in this case, we're seeing QML generated automatically based on our work in the Design Studio. In these tutorials, we're going to focus on the form editor view, but we will take a look now and then to see what's happening in our code. So in the topmost left of the application, we have our library, which contains QML types such as components, effects, and controls. And resources, where we'll import our assets, such as PNGs, later into this project. And then we have the imports, where we manage the libraries for our QML types. Underneath this, we have our navigator, which shows us all the elements of the file we are working on. And next to that, the project browser, that shows us all of the files in our project. At the very bottom of our screen, we have the states panel, which is a very important part of working with Qt Design Studio. These allow you to have specific instances of your UI which you can control via interactions from the user or the backend. If this sounds a little bit vague or confusing, don't worry, we'll come back to look at states in more detail in a future video. Here we also have our timeline, where we can animate any property of our UI, which I will cover in more detail in the next video. Up on the right hand side we have our properties panel, with which we can control a range of properties for the elements of our UI. Components, controls, effects, etc. For example, we can control the size or position or opacity of the logo image here. And finally, at the bottom right hand side, we have the connections panel, which contains connections, bindings and properties. Now, I'm not going to get into this now, but we'll explain this later in the project with some examples. OK, so let's take a look at our design. To preview it, we'll be using the Live Preview feature of Design Studio. So by pressing this button, we can preview our design in real time. Normally, I would have this running all the time on a second screen or the device itself. But for this video, we can just open and close it as we need. So the instrument cluster here has a boot up animation, which is an example of using the states we talked about earlier. And then it goes into its running state. Now each of these components is animated using mock data from a JavaScript simulation I created in order to test the UI and trigger events such as the ISO icons turning on and off. And all of the animations we see here are created using the Design Studio's timeline tool. So the rotation of the needle, length of the arc, all of the color changes and scaling animations on the display numbers. Now all of the original design here is created using Photoshop and Illustrator and then exported from Photoshop directly using our Qt Bridge exporter plugin. So let's close this project and go over to Photoshop and we'll start again from the beginning. And here in Photoshop we have our original artwork, which is a mixture of Illustrator artwork and Photoshop shapes. One important thing to remember is we're using the Type tool in Photoshop, as then all of our text layers will become text items when they're imported into Design Studio. We also need to make sure all of our art is grouped in artboards and then organized into the groups that we want to be separate components in our UI. Now once that's done, we can bring up the Qt Bridge plugin and start exporting our artwork across to Design Studio. To use the Photoshop exporter, you need to open it by going into the Window, Extensions, and then open the Qt Bridge plugin. The 
then we also need to go into the Photoshop preferences, and down into plugins, enable remote connections and create a password to be used in the Cute Bridge plugin. Now we go back across into our plugin and into the settings and in the password field we type the password we just created and then we can press the test connection button to check that it's working and we should see this dialog here. Now while we're here we can also set our export path where we want all of our assets to go here. To set up our Photoshop document to export we need to tell it what we want it to do with each of our groups and layers. And for that we have four main options. We have component, child, merged, and skipped. Now a component will create a separate file in Design Studio for each of the groups or layers that you select it for. Each of the children for these groups or layers will automatically become children, which means they will become their own item in the Design Studio. And the Merge option will merge all layers and groups together into a single PNG asset. And Skipped will completely skip the selected layer from or group from exporting. So for example, we want each main group here to be a separate component, and each of the layers and subgroups in that group to be children except in a few instances. For example, here where we have this dividing line and the gradient underneath it, we're going to choose to merge these down into one image as we don't need the separate components. And as you can see here on these small gear indicators, we're going to skip the background entirely because we don't want that. But everything else we can set up as components for the main groups in our project and children for all of the layers and subgroups inside these. And that's how we want it for this project. So when we're done with that, when we're ready, we can just press the export button and wait for the process to, to complete. And this might take a little while depending on the complexity of your project. But then when it's done, we can just press OK, come out of Photoshop and go back into Design Studio. Back in Design Studio, we create a new project by clicking here, and the project wizard should come up, and then we can choose a blank Cute Quick application, give it a name and a project location, and then set the resolution we're using, which in this case is Full HD. Now inside the Resources tab, we need to click on the Import Resource button and navigate to the Export folder we chose in the Cute Bridge plugin. And here we want to select this metadata file. Select that and press Open. Now we need to wait until that's finished importing, and this can take a little while depending again on the complexity of your Photoshop file. So now we see that all of our assets have been imported into our Resources tab here as PNG images. And all of our components that we specified in Photoshop have been imported here as separate QML files. So let's load up the main artwork file. We can see here all of our artwork. And each of these components has had its structure retained, and each of the subcomponents also contains all of the original structure from our Photoshop file. Now one of the first things to notice is that our fonts are not correct yet. Now in order to fix this we need to manually import our fonts into Design Studio. 
and we're going to do that first thing in the next video. Now something else I want to bring up here is a difference between Photoshop and Design Studio. In Design Studio, the bottom layer is here at the top of the navigator, and the top layer is down here at the bottom of the navigator. And the reason for this is the way that the code model works with QML. And you can see here that we have the, the code that's been generated from our Photoshop file. And right at the very bottom of that code, we have the speed dial, which is on top of our Photoshop document. So that's just an important difference to notice that the, the structure here goes from top to bottom rather than from bottom to top. So I think that's a good place to stop this video for now. And next time, we're going to start again from here, fix the fonts, and go into one of these components and start animating our UI. So thank you very much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video.